Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here. In this video, we're talking about PlayStation 2, PlayStation Vita, RetroArch, LaunchBox, Emulicious, and some gaming leaks. Let's get started. All right, we'll kick things off here talking about RetroArch and RetroArch version 1.11.0 just released. I'll leave a link to the entire change log in the description below in the event that you do want to check it out. We're going over things at a fairly high level here, and there's a lot of great information. So version 1.11.0 brings about a bunch of fixes and general improvements. For example, 3DS on RetroArch did get a little bit better. And for Android, apparently Gingerbread is now supported. It's worth pointing out that Direct3D9 has been split into two different drivers. We've got Direct3D9 HLSL, which has max compatibility but no shader support and Direct3D9 CG, which is probably the one most people won't be using. And interestingly enough, with Direct3D11 and 12, input lag has been reduced. They say here input lag is very close to Vulkan and GL Core. DualShock 3 support has been fixed for OS X and Wii U. A bunch of work has been done to the menus, including XMB and Ozone. And if you take a look now, you can use hotkeys for volume up, down, and mute from the main menu. There's been a whole bunch of work done to the overall network and netplay experience, including disabling netplay for unsupported cores. You can filter out rooms with non-installed cores, and there's a new toggle option for passworded rooms. Overall, if you use RetroArch Online, you'll be happy with all of these quality of life improvements. Now, these are just some of the changes, and if you're using RetroArch, it's usually a good idea to stay up to date with the latest version. I do recommend picking it up from RetroArch.com, unless you're trying to use it on Steam, in which case pick up the Steam version. But for Android, Windows, Mac, pretty much any other system, pick it up right from RetroArch.com. Next up, we're talking about multi-system emulator Ares, and Ares also got a brand new version. Version 130 just dropped. And as always, I'll drop a link to the entire change log in the description below, and I do recommend checking it out. Version 130 of Ares brings about the addition of N64DD emulation, and if you're on Mac, Parallel RDP is now supported. In addition to that, there's been improvements to a whole bunch of emulator cores, including the Atari 2600 and Sega Master System and Game Gear. In addition to that, the Sega Mega Drive core got some fixes, the Sega 32X core got some fixes, NES core, SNES core got fixes, Game Boy and Game Boy Color Core got fixes, and Game Boy Color can now run in DMG mode. GBA and N64 also got some fixes, and N64 does get N64 DD emulation, which gets a massive thumbs up. Microsoft MSX gets some fixes, SNK Neo Geo gets some fixes, and also improved performance. And even Sony PlayStation got some improved performance. Ares is 100% free, it's open source, and it's available for Windows, Mac, and Linux. If you haven't checked this one out yet, I highly recommend giving it a try. Next up, we're talking about PlayStation Vita emulation with Vita 3K, and this update is pretty quick, but pretty awesome. Uncharted is now in-game, I would argue not for Fully playable just yet, but being in game is amazing. And speaking about amazing, next up here we've got another quick one. We're talking about Nintendo Switch emulation on Android with Skyline. And we've got a new version of Skyline, actually a few of them. If you head to skyline-emu.one, click on download, you can find the latest version here, which is 1359. Dragon Ball Fighters is still not playable, but booting a little bit further. Super Dodgeball is looking great. Someone got Undertale up and running at 30 frames per second with a Snapdragon 429. That is well below the minimum recommended specs, and that is very impressive. Moving on, and we're talking about PlayStation 2 emulation on PC with PCSX2. I reported on this one a little while back when Retro Achievements kinda spilled the beans on it, but PCSX2 officially has Retro Achievements. And this is only for the standalone version of PCSX2, not the RetroArch Core. And in addition to that, if you're a Discord user, you'll like this new update. PCSX2 now has Discord-rich presence. Don't forget, PCSX2 is free, it's open source, and I do highly recommend it. To pick up PCSX2, head to PCSX2.net, click on Download, and from here, avoid the stable releases. Scroll down just a little bit. There are some nightly builds here that have all of the features you're looking for, for Windows, Linux, and Mac. And on a side note here, if you're picking this up for either Windows or Linux, I recommend the 64-bit AVX2QT build. 
and that is both available for, well, Windows and Linux. Next up, we're talking about Java-based multi-system emulator, Emulicious. Emulicious is available for Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Sega Master System, Sega Game Gear, and MSX, and also MSX2. This is Java-based, it's free, it's open source, and there's a brand new update available. This update isn't huge, it does contain a bunch of bug fixes, and if you're using Emulicious, I do recommend updating to the latest version. Moving on now, and we're talking about LaunchBox. If you're unfamiliar with LaunchBox, it's a front end for your emulation needs. It's not an emulator in itself, but it's designed to organize your ROM collection and make everything look great. So LaunchBox version 12.15 just dropped, and it's quickly bringing LaunchBox out of just an emulation front end into more of an all-in-one front end. There's now support for Steam, Epic Games, GOG, and Ubisoft. I think it's pretty awesome that you can now install or uninstall your Epic, GOG, Steam, or Uplay games right through LaunchBox. It makes it simple and straightforward. And if you're in LaunchBox menus and don't have a game selected, platform details are now listed. They've also added in some new system logos, filters, and they can support up to 32 controller buttons, which is insane. And they've also hired another developer. So it appears that LaunchBox is going to be getting even better at an even faster pace. Now LaunchBox is both free and paid versions on Windows and Android. It's an amazing application and I do recommend checking it out. In fact, I'm in the middle of a giveaway. I have 20 lifetime licenses to give away for LaunchBox and currently have given away two. So maybe I give away the third one in this video. To enter for your chance to win a lifetime license is really simple and straightforward. Send an email to launchboxgiveaway at mrsujano.com. Answer the following question. What version of LaunchBox just launched? Provide your name and also provide what version of the lifetime license you want, whether you want a Windows lifetime license or an Android lifetime license. So you've got a total of 24 hours from the time this video goes live till the time I randomly choose someone who answered the question correctly. Good luck and hopefully I see your email. Moving on now, and I've got some gaming leaks for you. It appears that Horizon Zero Dawn Remake or Remaster is in the works for PlayStation 5, and I'm not quite sure how I feel about this one. I don't want to say it's unnecessary, but I'm questioning why they're doing this. Now, don't get me wrong here, I think Horizon Zero Dawn is an amazing game, but I don't think it needs a remake for the PlayStation 5. I could be wrong though, let me know in the comments below. I personally feel that Sony could have used those resources for something else. And last up here, if you're a fan of Diablo 4 and wanted to see some gaming screenshots, well, some have serviced online. And I must say the game is looking really good. I think this game is going to be amazing when it comes out. But anyways, that is all I've got for you in this one. Straight to the point. All stuff and no fluff. Let me know your thoughts about anything we talked about today in the comments below, and we did talk about quite a bit. And yes, I'm camping again. Take a look at this background. It's picturesque. It's a little bit more green than it was yesterday. It's a little bit more warm than it was yesterday. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button. Check out my other videos. Don't tempt fate. Save your state.